the season. That's all Steve. <laughs> God with the voice of triumph. Psalms 47 1. Let's clap our hands. Let's give God some praise this morning because He's good and righteous and He loves us. 
Um, let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Thank you, dear Jesus, for all that you do for us, dear Lord. Heavenly Father, we just love you and we're just so thankful that we're in your house today, dear Lord, that we can come and worship you and we can praise you and we can sing songs of your birth that just saved us. You knew what to do. You knew that we needed you. And we are so thankful for that, dear Lord. Thank you for all these people that are here today, my church family, my friends, the ones I love. Thank you. I pray that you would bless them, that you would take care of them, that you would meet their needs and their heart's desires, dear Lord. We pray for the ones on the prayer list, dear Lord, that you would meet their needs, whether it be um, a physical touch, a financial touch, dear Lord, or just know that you are present in their life and wrap your arms around them lovingly and they will know your presence we pray with the we pray for the pastor today dear lord that he would just um speak your word that we would open up our hearts and our ears and be able to um, take this to the world dear lord so that when people see us they see you and that we are a witness for you always. We pray these things in thy name. Amen. Amen. Where'd he go? Does <laughs> everyone have a bulletin? Who do I have one? Everybody have one? Anybody need one? I have one. I have one. <coughs> Who's laughing? Mom? What? Hey. I'm going to separate the two. It's her fault. Okay, now we're going to talk about kings today. Kings. Good kings. But we're going to talk about a bad king and good kings and the king of kings. How about that? Does that sound good? We're going to look at Matthew chapter 2. We'll look at verses 1 through 8 first. Ready? Everybody ready? After Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, wise men from the east arrived unexpectedly in Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was deeply disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. So he assembled all the chief priests and scribes of the people and asked them where the Messiah would be born. In Bethlehem of Judea, they told him, because this is what was written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the leaders of Judah, because out of you will come a leader who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly summoned the wise men and asked them the exact time the star appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. When you find him, report back to me so that I can go and worship him. Someone is, someone is wise. Someone is wise. They have deep understanding. Or they have keen discernment. Or sound judgment. On the other hand, a wise guy is someone with an insulting lack of reverence and respect in speech or conduct. Or it is somebody who is an obnoxiously conceited and self-assertive person with pretensions to smartness and cleverness. That's a real, that's a very formal way of telling somebody that they're a smart aleck or, or a wise guy. So Herod really was a wise guy. He was obnoxiously conceited. 
He was a self-assertive person, and he had pretensions to cleverness. You go tell me, when you find the Messiah, come back and tell me where he is so I can go and worship him too. He had no intentions of worshiping the Messiah. There was a king that was born, and he heard that there was a king that was born, and he wanted to kill that king. Herod had purchased his position from the Romans. So if there was another king that was born, Herod wanted to take that king out. He wanted to kill that king. Um, now when we compare that to the way people are nowadays, a lot of, a lot of times what we do is uh, we put ourselves up as the king and then everything else follows. So that's why we have such a, so there's been such a departure from the church is because there are so many people that have put themselves as king, they don't recognize that Jesus is the king. Now these wise men, they came and they recognized that he was the king and told Herod, and Herod, being a wise guy, wanted to kill that king. Now, I don't know if you, if you know what happened, but Herod went and killed all of the male children below, like, two years old because of what the wise men told him. Went into Bethlehem and killed all the babies because he, was, he wanted, hoping to get the king. He didn't know which one of those babies was the king, so he just killed all of them. And when I look, at, when I look around the world right now, in, in our, I'm, I'm not just talking about the United States, I'm talking about around the world. Um, because when we, when we think of what Herod did, and we think, that, that is terrible, that is disgusting. We can't believe that somebody would do something that atrocious, right? I'm telling you right now, the world right now is filled with kings that are doing worse daily. What about the Passover? I don't know. I'm not talking about that right now. The oldest child was killed. What? No? Not only if they didn't put the blood on that door. Yeah, that was, that's a judgment. Now, we're not talking about that. And it, so, no, not, not that. I'm talking, about, I'm talking about kings right now in the world that are killing people, and they don't care because what they do is they, they want power for themselves, and they don't care whose lives they take to get it. One of the things that, there, actually, there's a couple things that bother me, especially right now. When we think about the, the people that take Christ out of Christmas and then, then see what they're doing in the world is, is unreal to me. It's It's unreal. It, I mean, more than that, it's unbelievable what's going on in the world. So, for instance, on the local news this week, this week, this is, I'm not talking about months ago, years ago, I'm talking about this past week um, in Columbus, Ohio, in Clintonville, they were having a, they planned an event called Holla Drag Story Time for the kids in Clintonville. That's in Columbus. You know what that is? They were planning on having men dressed up like women and coming and telling stories to the children in the library or someplace in Clintonville. Now, so on the news, this is what Chris and I saw on the news. They did a report that they were canceling this holiday. Now, they're saying, so what they're doing is they're going to tell these, they're going to set perverted men in ladies' lingerie to tell children Christmas stories. In Clintonville, Columbus, Ohio, in, in this past week, they canceled it. And the news story was how awful it was that they had to cancel this. Do you know why they had to cancel it? They had to cancel it because, this is what the news said, there was a, a far-right-wing conservative group that was active, um, apt to be violent protesting, so they canceled it. That's what the news reported. And the news story was, it's awful that they had to cancel this event for these children. Now I want to tell you something. Ten years ago, 
15 years ago, 20 years ago, if somebody organized an event like that, they would be called a pedophile. And they should be called a pedophile. That is pedophilia. That is, that is how far we've gotten away from Christ in Christmas. That, not, I'm not talking about us and our, our church. I'm talking about the society where we live. All right, there's another thing. Now, that's what the news reported. And that's how they reported it. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. They reported it that way, this awful... Oh, by the way, they never gave a name for that conservative group. And they did say, and there wasn't any violence. It was just they protested. If I would have known about it, I'd have protested too. I, this, it's unreal. All right, now, the other thing that the news is not reporting, and this is just as concerning, maybe more concerning, is that around the world, the number of unknown cause deaths working age people from age, like, what is it, 19, 20 to 59. It has been on the rise, like percentage-wise. Not like the number of people, but percentage-wise. Um, you're going to have to look this up for yourself. Danielle backed me up on this. She gets the information, too, because she's a nurse and uh, deals with this kind of stuff. Um, but there, there are a, a, an increase, a much higher increase. But for instance, there's a, a funeral company that does all funerals in North America. They do more funerals than anybody. It's a big corporate. They have investors. And what they do typically is uh, they buy up little mom and pop funeral homes like Gromlich, where I work. Like when one of those goes out of business, this corporate company buys them up and then starts offering funeral services through the, through that home. They are the largest funeral operator in North America. Not just the uh, United States, but North America. And what when they're reporting to their investors, they're reporting that they're having great increases. Profits are way up. And they told their, their investors it's because there is an increase in the number of deaths of working age people. Um, they, and they don't know why. It's usually put down as unknown causes. Danielle said she, she saw a 48-year-old or something, a young person like that died, and they put natural causes in there. And Danielle said, people 48 years old don't die of natural causes. That's, but, now, oh, so here's what the, the, that funeral company said. Um, they, they're really good at calculating about how many people's going to die each year. That's how they stay in business at, at a funeral company. And they would typically um, see an increase or decrease of 1% to 2% per year of these number of deaths that are, are not planned. They're, they're unusual deaths. Working age people that die. Um, so they expect it to go up 1% or down 1%, up to whatever like this. Um, they said the last quarter this year, the previous quarter, was up 15% of the same quarter in 2019. So before the pandemic, they, they expect by now that these numbers will be getting back down to normal. Instead of being up, like they were up 12% during the pandemic, and they expected them to start going down. They haven't. They've stayed high. 15 to 20. Now, these are not COVID deaths. These are not, they don't know why these people are dying. They're just dying. And, okay, now, if this was just the United States, that would be concerning, right? But this is global. It's not just the United States. That means there are millions and millions more people dying than what's ever been planned. This, this, is, this is biblical proportions here, globally. Check it for yourself. Don't trust me. I tell, I'll tell you, don't trust me on that. <laughs> Check it for yourself. But trust me on this, that it's global proportions. It's biblical. When, when, we, when the pandemic first happened, I checked, I checked Revelations and I thought for sure that maybe this is the end, the way that they were uh, you know, reporting about it. <clears throat> I don't, the pandemic wasn't that bad. It was bad, but it wasn't as bad as I initially thought or they were portraying it. But I'm telling you, since then, this number of deaths that is staying high is not good.
That, that means that there is a higher percentage. Your, your loved ones, people that are younger than you, are going to die early, and they don't know why. They don't know why it's happening, and they're not talking about it. I posted a thing on Facebook, and Facebook is in with, with them. They don't, they don't want to distribute information. They don't want to share this kind of stuff, and nobody saw it. The only people that saw it are people I tagged in it. And I wanted Danielle. I said, Danielle, look at this. I want you to see if this is true or right. Am I misreading this? No, it, it's true. Look. I have a question. Where would you look, up, look that up at? Like what kind of? Look up uh, Facts Matter on YouTube with Roman Bakalov or something. I don't know how to pronounce it. Okay. But he's with the Epic Times. Epic Times? But he has all the documents. So he also did a life insurance, a life insurance company. Uh, life insurance companies, you know, they're real good about making money. And the way that they do that is they, can, they keep track of who dies and how many people die every year. Well, the, uh, if you have any money invested in life insurance companies, you're probably losing money a lot. Because they're, they're hurting bad. Because there is such an increase on the number of un unknown deaths, unreasonable, unknown caused deaths of working age people. The, the insurance companies pay out those things to people that work. They're working people. You know, when, when I worked at Inside, we had insurance through, you know, life insurance through our company. Well, those people are the ones that are dying that they're having to pay out, working age people. And this is globally. So that's something, I, I wanted to bring this up first. It's the first part of the sermon because I, I don't want the rest of the sermon to be a downer like this. But this is just as true stuff. Check it out. They're not talking about it. That makes me very concerned why they're not talking about it. I mean, our government leaders, other government leaders around the world, has anyone heard of this besides me? And Chris? Just look at the obituary page. You'll see that. I, I'll tell you, in the last 14 months, I, I, I've done six funerals for people that I know. That's the highest I've done in 25 years. In that, in that amount of time. So, look, there's evil kings all over this world, and they don't care if people die as long as they stay in power. That's what they want. And they, and they don't care. And really, as Christians and as people that care for other people, be mindful of these things. The, of the funerals that I've done in the past 14 months, Half of them were working age people. That's, and that makes me sick. It sickens me. And it, these, the governments, look, anybody, if you, if you think there's any righteousness in any politician, you're more fooled than anybody on earth. Politicians do not have righteousness about them. They don't have wisdom. I'm talking on, on the whole. I, I know there's probably some good ones. I sure hope there's some good ones. But look, they're so rare, far between. That, yeah. Alright, but anyways. Don't be a wise guy. Those guys are wise guys. And I can't believe they're just letting these people die and they're not talking about it. They're just trying to figure out why or anything. Yeah, but when I, when I was young, um, used to be that people went to church at least two times a year. Christmas and Easter. Reverend Snyder would say there were C and E Christians. They just went on Christmas and Easter. Um, the other thing that Reverend Snyder used to say is uh, I thought about this this morning. Um, the TV, if you talk about the TV, that's called the boob tube. Okay? So the other thing you can call it that's appropriate, the idiot box. It's either the idiot box or the boob tube. Now look at this. For though they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God or show gratitude. Instead, their thinking became nonsense, and their senseless minds were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools. When you watch the TV, and you see how these, how that the news reported the story of canceling holla drag story time. Romans 1.28, And because they did not think it worthwhile to have God in their knowledge, God delivered them over to a worthless mind to do what is morally wrong. And I'm telling you what, that's happening. So when you're with your families during Christmas 
the Christmas season and the new year during this time, you really need to, to work on your loved ones. Let them know that Jesus loves them, that he died for them, that he was born for them and died for them and rose again for them because they're not getting that from the world. Instead, they're getting holla drag story time is what they're getting. Now look, and as far as, as far as that goes, so people commit all kinds of sins, and I'm not, you know, I'm not like trying to judge these people that whatever sins they do, but what I'm saying is, don't do that with children. I, why, why is it that I feel like I'm the only one that's sane? Uh, and, and you guys probably feel the same way. Because that sounds crazy to me. Doesn't it? Yeah. All right, I'm just making sure. Now, so, after hearing the king, these wise men, one thing about them is that they had wisdom. I think that's a rare commodity nowadays. They had wisdom. After hearing the king, they went on their way, and there it was, the star they had seen in the east. It led them until it came and stopped above the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed beyond measure. Entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and falling to their knees, they worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their own country by another route. So I like to point out a couple of things whenever we talk about the Magi. Of course, I don't have my glasses on, so I get back here and I can't see that. Now, one thing, now remember, Herod asked them exactly when they saw the star. Because he wanted to know about how old that child was that he was going to have to get rid of. So, when we look at the passage here, they, Jesus was still in Bethlehem, but was already in a house. When still staying in, in the stable, but was in a house. So, they entered the house and to find Jesus. Amen? Amen. Um, another thing, uh, oops, I went too far. Um, we, we always associate the wise men with the three gifts. So we always think that there's three wise men. So if you have, if you have a nativity at your house, you probably have three wise men, right? Does anybody have more than three wise men <coughs> in their nativity? Anyone? <laughs> Just curious. These are the gifts. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now I'm going to pass this around. Don't take, this stuff is valuable. I know how many's in here. I'm just kidding. I don't really know how many's in here. Don't take any. Pass this around. I think it's interesting. Um, so, but really, we, so we associate the three wise men with the three gifts. But really, there were probably nine or ten of them. There was a group. There were a group of them that went to find Jesus. Um, the other thing is, scientists try to figure out what constellation was, was had come together that formed that these guys saw that star that they followed. And I don't believe that there was a physical constellation that that was there that they followed, or a certain one star that just showed up. For one thing, this was several years, or a couple years. Constellations, or you know, a star that comes up isn't there for like a couple years. Or if there's just one, it's not. And the other thing is, when you read the scriptures, it said they followed the star to where Jesus was. Not where Jesus was born, they followed the star to where he was. And when they found, when the star stopped above where he was, and they, they found Jesus. So that, to me, means that was a supernatural star. I don't believe that was a, just Jupiter had to be, happened to be close that year. No, I don't think that was it. I think that was a supernatural star, and it was a supernatural birth. <laughs> so why wouldn't he have a supernatural star? If God's going to come down to heaven, why wouldn't he say, I'm going to light right there when I get here. Yeah. Um, so then, now this this week is supposed to be uh, um, depending on what Advent people you look at, uh, they're different. All the four different, they mean something different. This week though, we're doing joy and joy, and these guys 
were, they were very happy about finding the baby. After hearing the king, they went on their way, and there was the star they had seen in the east. It led them until it came and stopped above the place where Jesus was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed beyond measure. Overjoyed beyond measure. And I know I've shared this before, but I like to share it, and I think it's good to hear again. They were happy with happiness, great, extremely. That's literally how it's read in the Greek. They were happy with great, extreme happiness. It's like, I think that Matthew didn't, couldn't find enough words to tell how happy these guys were. How much joy that they had, that they found. And it was so happy. Now, this is a, uh, the Brent's literal translation. We call that a BLT. Uh, hello? Are you, what are you guys having to eat down there for the party? Or can we stop in? Don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Wise men still seek him. And I will say this. I add this to it. Wise men still find him and they worship when they do. Uh, we're gonna, I don't even know what time it is. Oh, yeah. We're good. So our now our theme for uh, this year so far for Christmas, the first week, uh, and you know, I talked we talked about getting ready for Christmas, and last week Chris talked about getting ready for Christmas and how God was getting ready, things ready for Christmas. Now this this week we're looking at the the wise men, the magi, and they had things ready. They had things ready for Jesus when he got here, meaning that they got things ready beforehand. They didn't wait till that day, but they had things ready beforehand, right? Um, entering the house, they saw a child, and then, and they, then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. All right, we're going to start with myrrh. We're going to start at the bottom and go up. Myrrh. That's the light colored stuff in your that little box. Who's got that box? Me. Right. I'm, I know how many's in there. We're following Mom. Your box with you. I know how many's in there, Mom. Can I have some of the frankincense? No. I have some frankincense up here, I'll give you later. <laughs> so, uh, but myrrh, that's the first thing. And myrrh is embalming. For embalming. That's what that's for. Now, now Unless you know something, unless you have some kind of divine insight, why would you get myrrh, give myrrh to a newborn baby? Yeah, exactly. Or one that's one or two years old. You wouldn't, would you? Unless you know something. I think that they knew, they understood that this child was a sacrifice for humanity. That, the, that this was God in the flesh who was going to give his life to save us, to redeem us. That he would be the purchasing price for us. So that... That's embalming. That this is the first thing that they that they gave. Well, one of the things. Frankincense. Now we do have we got frankincense right over here. You should light one since you can't get the candle to burn. Maybe you can get it to relight. Yeah, that's frankincense. Now you know what frankincense you can you can look in the Old Testament and you can see that frankincense is prescribed in the worship of God. Not and I talked about this a few weeks ago, but. Um, not sacrificial uh, for sins, not sacrifices for sins, but sacrifices of, of uh, praise and thankfulness. It, that's when the incense was burned. I think that's interesting. That then they, bring, they also bring to Jesus incense, frankincense, not just incense, frankincense. And doing so, they're showing this is God. This is God. God is the one who prescribed that as, as part of worship frankincense. So when they bring this, just like they would use that to worship God, they're giving it to Christ as birth. And then gold, deity, <coughs> royalty, divine, the king. The king will have gold. I mean, if a king's got a crown, what's it made out of? Gold. Right? If the king has a necklace, what's it made out of? Gold. 
right? So here, gold is being given to him because these three kings are recognizing the king of kings. The three kings are recognizing the king of kings. He is royal, he is divine, he is deserving of worship, and he's our sacrifice. He was born to be our sacrifice. So we're going to wrap this up real quick. The gifts that they give right here. Now, now look, this is in the Greek. In the Greek, it's, it's the, uh, in English, it's gifts. But the, the Greek word is, is doron. And in the Greek word, that just, that means a sacrificial gift. That doesn't mean like a gratuity, like you, you appreciate something somebody did. Or, or it's not like a birthday present. This is a sacrificial gift, a gift that's used in worship. So 18, 18 times in the New Testament, this word is used. And every time it's used, it's used as a sacrificial gift to God. Like you sacrifice something to give to God. So when these guys gave their gifts to Jesus, they were sacrificial gifts. They gave as, as a, a form of worship to him. Now, when we give, we give in the church, when we give our offerings and our tithes, we're, that's a, an offering that we're giving. That's a sacrificial gift that we're giving to the Lord. So that, that's just an example. Now, what I want you to see is this. We're going to close with this. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. And in this passage, it says, For by grace you are saved through faith. That, and this is not from yourselves. It is God's gifts. Not from works, so that no one can boast, for we are his creation, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time so that we should walk in them. This, right here, this is not from yourselves, it is God's gift, because it's by grace. I didn't save myself, right? He saved me by grace. This is not from yourself, it is God's, this word right here. Is Dover in the Greek? That's God's sacrificial gift to us. Jesus. In Christ Jesus, He's God's gift. He's the sacrifice that was made for us. So, these wise men, with all their wisdom and forethought, knew this was the Savior of the world that was going to be that sacrificial offering for us. He is King of Kings. I posted on Facebook this morning when I was going over my sermon notes. I think the Lord popped this in my head because I'm not smart enough to figure this out myself, right? <laughs> um, bad kings will take life from others for their own power the king of kings set aside his power to give life to others that's our Jesus he stepped out of heaven into earth to be our sacrifice to save us to be our sacrificial gift. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for another opportunity you've given us to hear your word and to learn more about you and the love that you have for us and all of humanity, that you would send your son to die for us. I pray, Lord, if there's anyone that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, that today would be the day. Where, as we're approaching Christmas in 2022, they would say, today, Lord, Forgive me of my sins. I trust what you did on the cross for me. I trust in the sacrificial gift that you made to save me. Lord, I know if anyone prayed that prayer, you're, you're already speaking to them. I pray that they would tell others of the decision they made and the salvation they found in you. And I pray, Lord, that you'll help each one of us as Christians to live in a way that we are mindful that we serve the King of Kings. He is above all. And we praise you above all. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Now.
Now wait, there's is that George? That is George. George, did you lose the boys? I left them. <laughs> no. George, that was the only thing you were supposed to keep track of. <laughs> <laughs> they said maybe they will go all over and forget them if they don't come in. And I left them quite uh, after I was done teaching, I left. Oh. So. Did you text them? Yeah. So the two little boys were staying with staying overnight at the grandparents' house right before Christmas. And so grandma goes in to, to tell her two grandsons to say their prayers before they go to bed. And um, they, they say, okay, they would. So grandma <coughs> leaves the room and the, the youngest boy, he prays, Dear Lord, I want an Xbox for Christmas and a new bicycle. <laughs> the older brother said, hey, hey, you don't have to yell. God's not deaf. See how grandma is. <laughs> Got any work? Did you hear about the cheese factory that blew up in France? I'm going to go get the boys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you tell them about the coloring page? And the, the oh, yeah. So did you look in your bulletins? Now, because I, I'm, I tried, I'm trying to cover for everybody's like, and for like Jim especially. Um, if you notice on, there's the word find, which is our passage from, from our passage today. And then on the other side, you know, if the word find is too difficult, I think you probably the, the page coloring page on the other side would probably be right for about your speed. <laughs> what? What you said. <laughs> That's what we were laughing at. <laughs> that it's. For the people, you know, the word finds too hard. Take a look at that coloring page. It's really not tricky. Jim asked if, if we had any crowns. I said, Jim, you got everything you need to finish that coloring page. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen it? Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> You know what the caption? I found that on the internet. Is it a No. Somebody let me let me see there so I can show Jim. So on the internet, the caption for that picture is uh, a coloring page for lazy people. <laughs>
joy to the world. Again. Are you happy? Everybody happy? Yes. Let me see some joy.